Hi everyone, in this video we'll talk about authentication. Our goal in this video is to design an authentication protocol and we'll do that in steps. So what we'll do is we'll start off by creating a simple protocol, poke holes in the protocol and then try to refine this protocol. I hope that this video would help you understand the subtle aspects of authentication and why authentication is an important and challenging problem in network security. So the goal here is Bob and Alice want to communicate with each other and Bob wants Alice to prove her identity to him. So let's just start off with the simplest protocol that we can think of. Alice says to Bob that I am Alice. Okay. So what is the failure scenario of this protocol? So there is Trudy who can listen to this channel and this communication between Alice and Bob. So what could Trudy do? Trudy could just impersonate as Alice and Trudy could just send this message to Bob saying, I am Alice. As Bob cannot physically see Trudy, there is no way for Bob to understand that this message actually came from Trudy and it did not come from Alice. So this, as we can see, this protocol has a bunch of flaws. So let's try to improve upon this protocol. So this is version 2.2. So what Alice does is Alice says I'm Alice in an IP packet containing her source IP address and sends this to Bob. So let's see whether this is foolproof. Once again, this particular protocol also has a drawback. What, what Trudy could do, Trudy could also send the same IP packet to Bob and what she could do is instead of putting her IP address, she could send the message by inserting Alice's IP address. So she impersonates Alice's IP address. This is known as packet spoofing. So once again, when Bob receives this message, Bob would believe that this came from Alice and not from Trudy. So let's try and refine this per protocol again. So now let's go to the third version. So what Alice could now do is, Alice could insert a secret password in this message. So Alice includes her IP address, she puts her password and then says, I am Alice. She sends this across to Bob and then Bob verifies this information and replies an OK. So let's see whether there is a failure scenario for this. Once again, the same failure scenario can apply. What I can, what Trudy could do is, Trudy could just play back this message that came from Alice. She could record the message that was sent to Bob and then later play it to Bob. In this way, Bob would believe that this message came from Alice and not from Trudy. So this is a playback attack and it's slightly different from the previous attack where, uh, where Trudy actually spoofed uh, Alice's IP address. So now we can think of refining this protocol a little bit further. So now what Alice could do is she would want um, Bob to use some kind of encryption. So what she could do is she could encrypt her password. So this password is sent to Bob in an encrypted manner. So even if Trudy receives this message, she would not be able to understand this uh, password that she sent to Bob. So is there a failure scenario for this setting? Once again, the failure scenario is exactly the same. What Trudy could do is she could just record this message in transit from Alice to Bob. She records it and later just plays it back to Bob. And this, this method would once again work. So even if you encrypt your password and send it, the playback attack would still work. So now let's see whether we can refine this protocol one step further. And with that we come to AAP 4.0. So the goal here is to avoid the playback attack. So what Bob and Alice do is they use a number R uh, called nonce, which is only used once in a lifetime. So to prove Alice is live and this is not a playback attack, Bob sends Alice the nonce R. Now Alice must return this R encrypted with the shared secret key. So we assume symmetric key cryptography where Alice and Bob share a the same key. So let's see this protocol is in action. So Alice says, I'm Alice. So Bob just wants to verify that this is a live message and this is not a playback attack. So what Bob does is Bob sends this nonce R to Alice. Alice then sends the nonce back to, to R, but this time she has encrypted R with her, uh, with the shared key. So once Bob receives this encrypted message, he can decrypt it and see that uh, Alice is live because only Alice knows the shared symmetric key between uh, Bob and Alice. So this protocol is seems to be working fine. So I'd like to, you to think about what could be the failures and drawbacks 
of this kind of protocol as well. So we've taken this step-by-step -step appro step -step approach to improve this protocol. So let's see what is the drawback of this protocol. One drawback of this protocol is that it uses a symmetric key. There has to be a shared key between Alice and Bob, which is hard to achieve in practice. So the next question that we might have is, is this possible using public key cryptography techniques? So with this, we get to uh, AP 5.2. So what Alice and Bob could do is they have they use public keys. So Alice has a private key and she has she can make the public key known to the world. So once again, the procedure is exactly the same. Alice says uh, Alice to Bob. Bob sends the nonce. What Alice does is Alice sends the nonce back, but this time she's encrypted it with her private key, which only she knows. Bob would then ask Alice, can you send me your public key? And then Alice sends the public key over to Bob. Uh, Bob uses this public key and uses it on the encrypted message and he can recover the nonce back. So we could use authentication with public key cryptography again. Now, the bigger question is, is this uh, authentication technique prone to any kind of attack? Unfortunately, even this is prone to some kind of attack. So 4.2 did not apparently seem to have any attacks if we use symmetric key cryptography, but if you use public key cryptography, the same, uh, the same technique results in some kind of uh, attacks. So let's see what is the security hole here. Authentication protocol 5.2 is subject to a new kind of attack called man or woman in the middle attack. So what Trudy does is she poses as Alice to Bob and as Bob to Alice. So when Alice sends the message, I am Alice, Trudy intercepts the message and passes it over to Bob. Bob is now going to send a nonce back, which Trudy intercepts. And then what she does is she encrypts the nonce with, nonce with her private key and sends it back to Bob. Bob would ask Trudy what her public key is and she sends the public key back to Bob. Now let's focus on the communication between Alice and Trudy. What Trudy would do is she would send the nonce that Bob sent back to Alice. Alice would encrypt this nonce and send it back to Trudy and then Trudy would ask Alice for her public key. At this juncture, Trudy has established herself as Alice to Bob and she also has knowledge of the public key of Alice. Now let's assume that Bob wants to send some message to Alice. What Trudy would do is Trudy would get this message from Bob, which Bob has encrypted with her public key. Now once Trudy gets this message, she would use her private key to decrypt the message. She would get this message and then she would send this message back to Alice by encrypting that message with Alice's public key. So when Alice gets this message, she would be also be able to decode the message. So both Alice and Bob believe that they have established an authentic communication with each other and they could exchange these messages back and forth. So they wouldn't know the presence of Trudy and Trudy by sitting in this middle, which is known as the man or woman in the middle attack, what she could do is she could get hold of all the messages being exchanged between Alice and Bob. Now, this kind of attack is very difficult to detect because Bob receives everything that Alice sends and vice versa. And even if Alice and Bob meet sometime later in person, they can recall the entire conversation and they would believe that they had an authentic conversation and nobody was able to understand their messages. Now, we'll stop this video with this slide. And in a future uh, video, we'll talk about dis digital signatures and see how dis digital signatures and um, certificates can be used to actually prevent this kind of attack.